It's your boy Carcino here live and uncut. Um, there's so much negativity on the internet nowadays, you know, with social media, that things have changed. There is no way, shape, or form people can identify things the way they used to. You, There is no, I like it, it's okay. Now you either got to be like, it's the greatest thing ever, or it sucked. So there's no middle ground. And people don't know how they got there. So they're not able to appreciate something that may be good, just not great. They just qualify it as, well, it ain't great, so it must have sucked. Now, going into Stephen A. Smith. And people want to see well, how these two things connect. As a columnist, doing his coming up and coming of age, Stephen A. Smith in the 90s, what have you, why he's doing his broadcasting job and analysts and sports writing. You know, he comes from a basketball background, he blew his knee out, he yelled, wrote an article about the coach. <laughs> at the place, you know, citing in differences with him, but overall he wasn't good enough to go to the next level. Maybe that's part of, him, um, you know, a bias that he has when he writes. You know, you could see, you know, he's been on radio, but from his writing he's very arrogant. You can see it in his, you can read it from the pages. He comes off as very arrogant, very boastful, very confident. You would think that this guy averaged about 30, 40 points a game when he played, or he was that great of a basketball player. Now, here's the situation. Um, Stephen A. Smith started to do some radio, and his voice became the voice that anybody else would want to follow. And I, I and I understood why the people of Philly they used to love him. You know, they liked him. He he was a powerful voice in the community. The way he talked, the way he spoke with intelligence, very articulate. Now, when Norby saw and took light to him, it's like, man, this kid has something. Like this guy has something right here. He's got it. You know, that voice needs to be on ESPN. That voice is loud, you know, but he's smart with what he says. And he's company, you know, like he won't disrespect the company. So while on ESPN, you know, he got moved up pretty fast. And they decided to give him his own spotlight show, quite frankly, with Stephen A. Smith. Here's where a lot of people may get lost, because they may not never have heard this information before that I'm about to say. And some of you be like, oh, I already knew that. Well, congratulations to you. But during this time frame, there was a lot of jealousy at ESPN and allegedly ESPN started leaking information out like they were like the team that they interview and when they might have an issue they leaked the information out to the ESPN who were actually the reporters now the reporters are leaking information out about reporters and columnists it was completely retarded, but now they're posting things online that make people side with Stuart Scott or Stephen A. Smith in a comparison. Like, who do you like better? And the things that this guy does and this guy doesn't do. Now, there's negative rights about Stephen A. Smith. There's a lot of talk in the, in the room about the show. 
they even printed out in the ESPN office, allegedly, there's a picture of Stephen A. Smith, and it prints out and it comes out and it says, and this is in 2005, it's happened, and it says, Screaming A. Smith. And they're laughing, ah, and passing it around. And then it comes to, Stephen A. Smith has seen it. The picture, and they, like, somebody put it on his desk, Screaming A. Smith on the show and, and he just laughed with him. That was the time he should have said something. But he kind of went on with it as a joke. But I don't think that's something you push past or just ignore. That's something you need to address right then and there when it happens. Because that didn't start on the internet. That started there. A legend. So, somewhere down the road, some people there was very envious of him. Even though his show came on at a time where most people were, were going to the nightclub for their target audience. The type of guests he had on the show weren't the type of guests that were going to make people stick around. I mean, he basically brought in people that he was friends with on this show multiple times. Uh, the Alvin Iverson interview was probably one of the best. Um, he had a couple of interesting guests on the show, but it never really got the support or backing from ESPN, and the show never really was a success. But I, I, I kind of think that both sides really didn't do what they should have been doing to make it a success and getting behind Stephen A. Smith. So when they canceled the show and brought Stephen A. Smith into the fold of putting him, expanding him, Norby was like, look, we're just going to expand you over all the networks and just let people see you more and more so they can see that you're intelligent. You're not somebody that just screams all the time. So when all of this is going down, there's a shakeup. That's starting to happen. You know, yeah, Stephen A. Smith is becoming the voice and the guy for the NBA. He's covering the games at the end of the games. They got Stephen A. Smith there. He's not just doing Philly, he's doing every, he's global. So as his stock rises into ESPN and they put him on his own show, quite frankly, I mean, not quite frankly, but first take. Now, Stephen A. Smith is a known guy throughout every household, no matter race, religion, color, whatever. They look at those markets. They test the areas to say urban, you know, where the people like him, don't like him. They do these polls. So, he's rating very high on the polls with the Skip Bayless and everyone else. Now, when he came out and attacked Jalen Rose, and then Jalen was on the show. And Jalen was making a point from, you know, the, the players. That was, you know, I would say, that wasn't the best way to handle the situation, I think. I think his involvement in it messed it up completely when they brought Stephen A. Smith in. Him and Skip Bayless kind of took care of the situation, and they brought Stephen A. in, and it went in a whole different direction all over. So it's like when people resolve a situation, then you come in and take it left. And now the situation is still on the table, and now people are even more confused as to what the situation was in the first place. So it was a major detraction for what happened on the show. Now, there was an incident in which Mark Cuban, with the Trayvon Martin situation, and they asked Mark Cuban about, you know, the Trayvon Martin, and he was just giving his thoughts, and then he goes into a thing like, if I saw a kid with a hoodie over his head walking towards me, I might just cross the street. If I see a black kid with a hoodie on, with it covering his face or whatever, and he's walking towards me, I might just cross the street. You know, I'm not a racist or anything, but I'm just in, might be in fear of my own danger, you know, my life. But if I saw a white guy with tats all over his body and he's walking towards me, I'm still going to cross the street. 
I'm not going to feel safe either way. You know, that's just his inner prejudice. But blacks at that time took to Stephen A. Smith and decided to call him a Uncle Tom, a coon, and all this stuff because he took up for Mark Cuban because he agreed with Mark Cuban's statements there. Black people at that time was just hurt and mad, period. And anybody saying anything that has something to do with Trayvon Martin, anything that didn't, wasn't agreeable with the situation they was, it was an outlash of anger because they were mad. So I understood that. I'm not mad at that, but I agree with what Mark Cuban said. Because if I saw a gang of brothers with hoodies on walking towards my direction, my antennas are going to go up. I'm not going to run across the street just yet. I want to see what's going to happen. Or if they're coming towards me, I'm alert. If I seen a, a guys with tattoos and skinheads look like, you know, they ball with tats, they could just be going home. Or they coming home from their body shop job. I don't know. But my antennas are going to be up. I may not cross the street, but my antennas are going to be alert. So in case something goes down, I'm, I'm prepared mentally for it. But I understood why you would feel reservations from, from those type of situations. I understood what Mark Cuban was saying. But in the black community, they just took the first quote that he said. Mark Cuban feels uncomfortable if a black guy in a hoodie walks towards him. You know, they didn't even finish the rest of his comments. So, black social media, all we hear is that those comments are being fed to us. So, we remember the first line only, cut everything else off, and we responding just to that. And Stephen A. Smith was villainized and got all the hate mail in the world. And you don't side with nobody right now. It's Trayvon Martin, Trayvon Martin, and this really had nothing to do with that whatsoever. It's just a scenario that happened with Trayvon Martin was being brought up again, and black folks is in pain. You know, they don't want to see that happen to no kid, because that kid could have easily been anybody else's child. So, going through this notion, you got a situation where he had to clarify himself. Then comes the Ray Rice incident. Stephen A. Smith does not condone men beating on women. They know that. They have vetted him. They know about all his sisters. They know how he feels about his family. He would not have been working at ESPN if he was that somebody type of somebody that covets abuse and what happened here was one person causing a whole mess on social media which didn't need to be and take something out of context Stephen A. Smith reiterated all through that dialogue that he does not condone violence on women and standing up no man under any circumstances should hit a woman and he stated that and he just brought a point up though because everybody looks at it from one side of the coin they don't look at it from both sides and say women shouldn't be doing things to provoke men to want to attack them so it goes both ways, like no man should be able to hit you, but let's not do the things to try to make the man hit you or provoke them. And Michelle Beadle, who I guess was, from what her mouth says, she was in an abusive relationship before from ESPN, and that's why she's become the, the end-all, be-all of authority on a domestic abuse of, on women. So... All of a sudden, she becomes the spokeswoman. I don't know who elected her, but she becomes that spokesperson. She wears a, a mini skirt. It's like, uh oh, I'm wearing a mini skirt. Hope I don't provoke any man to beat me 
you know, completely taking what he said out of context, and she knew what she was doing. Knowing that's not, knowing that's not what he meant by that, because we have seen in the black community a lot. I've seen it in both sides. I've seen white people. And I've seen black people. I've seen white guys hit their wives. I've seen black guys hit their wives with a woman or girlfriend. And I see a lot of times the women provoke it. In certain instances, they ask to be hit. Hit me, hit me, hit me, you punk. Hit me, you punk B, and they hitting on them. Hit me, come on, hit me. I tell you, I tear you up. Hit me. I hit you with this pot. Come on, punk. Hit me. I've seen that numerous of times. Numerous. But the women scream for equal rights, but they don't want to be equal. It's not equal when you get the beat on a man and he can't touch you. That's not equal. So yes, yeah, stop provoking him to hit you because he's the one that's going to go to jail, not you. You're hitting him, beating all on him, but he's a man so he's supposed to be able to take it. It's all right. No, it's a double standard. If you want equal rights, be equal. So I'm I'm all in agreement. Nobody should be hitting nobody. There's no need. If you gotta hit your woman or your, you gotta hit your man, y'all don't need to be together. That's it. Period. If you feel like I gotta punch your teeth out, don't even be there. Cause that's not productive for you. Obviously. If you're not with this woman and you're thinking like, man, together, man, we could build something, we get something together, get a business or, or do something to, you know, put some money aside for the kids and build a family, build a house, something productive, then what are you doing with this person? This is definitely not the person for you. And Michelle Beadle calls all this stuff just melee to go on with social media to where they started, everybody started attacking Stephen A. Smith. And once that happened, he was like, oh, he's saying women provoke it. Took his words out of context and ESPN suspended him. This is when the line should have been drawn in the sand by Stephen A. Smith. Once again, he was provided with a platform to stand his ground. And what did he do? He came back, put his tail in between his legs, and gave an apology for something he never should have had to apologize for. You can't apologize for the fact that they're stupid and took it out of context. You should have told ESPN, I will go in there and clarify myself on what I meant. But I'm not going to say, I'm sorry. I'd be like, I'm sorry you got it wrong. But if you listen to what I said, then there's no way you could take it in that format. But people are always in different positions. People are always in a different mode, a different spec spectrum, a different... Um, attitude or how they may feel or maybe Stephen A. Smith wasn't in a position to leave at that time. But I find that very hard to believe. I think there was many of different opportunities out there for him and he had found that taking that leap and taking that risk would have probably been the best thing for him. But he didn't. He, he played ball. Now, since he's played ball, he's continued to play ball. And there's a change in him now. He doesn't challenge too much of anything anymore that has something to do with issues. He don't really challenge no more unless it's something that's suitable or fitable to what 
ESPN and their angle is, or what company angle is. So when he went and made the Kevin Durant statements and that now he could stand his ground. Now he can be a man. Now he can step up. Look at me, Kevin Durant. You do not want to make me upset. You do not want to make an enemy of me. You saying this to an NBA basketball player who was player of the year, whose mom, they made a movie about him and his mother, and you're going to disrespect him on national television like that. I find that to be egregious, especially from a columnist, and that is something you should have apologized for on the air. Now, that wasn't done. But the damage was done, because now black America has completely written him off. His, his numbers with the urban community are very low now. Nobody trusts anything what Stephen A. Smith says. But first take does do, do well. They do better. The show does good numbers because they love to see those two argue. The numbers have dipped a little bit. But it still does fairly good compared to a lot of the other shows that are on ESPN. That show about Bamani and the, the old man, and that show does well, especially in the Latino markets. I have no idea why, but that show seems to, for this time slot, I don't know. Maybe it's a lot of Hispanic women at home during that time, but for that time slot, it does pretty good. So, much success to them. But this is the problem that people have with Stephen A. Smith. When, it was t when it's time to step up to take that risk to put something on the line I can't, I can't find a record of where he's done that you know there has been plenty of times Stuart Scott has put stuff on the line you just didn't know about it. But there's been plenty of times Stuart Scott had to put things on the line. Did he make mistakes? Absolutely he did. He's not greater or a better man than Stephen A. Smith and all that stuff. I don't get into those things. Of who was a better man and somebody being better than... He just handled things in a different manner. So he balanced the line between the urban markets and the corporate market. And he knew how to balance them well without causing too many waves. Because you're going to cause waves there. Because corporate and urban market are definitely two different things that are not basically coexisting. They want something from you, you just want to get the real. <laughs> So they got to provide you with a product or something that you'll like or want to see or understand. And it's your job to say, look, I'm going to call you out on your BS when you BSing me. But give me what I want to see so I can stick around with that. I'm turning the channel. So it's no different than anything else. But with us, we we always under the eight ball. We, we're, we don't trust anything. The first thing somebody says is a lot. It's got to be skeptical. Oh, we got to make sure. He says it's raining outside. We can't believe it. So, we don't accept new information that well. But is Stephen A. Smith an Uncle Tom? Or is he a coon? People keep asking me all day long about those questions. And my only thing I can tell you about that subject is I just can't call this man a coon or Uncle Tom. But he has made some very questionable statements that would make somebody say those things. But it seems to always revolve around him, though. Things that, you know... 
I would say, for him to step up, that would be beneficial to the other brothers that come up, make a stance, and say, look, this is what, or they're going to replace you. It seems like he put his tail in between his legs when those situations presented themselves. And when he did, he did what he did. Now I'm quite sure all you guys who watch ESPN, you guys know many more stories that you want to add. But those, those, that's what I know. So on this note, it's your boy Carcino. I'm out. I'm at Twitter at Carcino, uh, Instagram at Carcino, and I'm done for that. <laughs>